Hello, my name is Jordan and I'm your host. Boy, do I love, 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 love saying that because guys, I really just love recording these episodes with for you guys and just ranting all about mental health, talking about mental health and just absolutely vibing. I know this is the intro and I probably shouldn't be going on about this, but I don't know. I just really love recording episodes for you guys and I really miss this. I love it every time. Um, (laughs) Moving on, our co-host is vibing it up, just uh, enjoying her own vacation and just having the time of her life. And I absolutely love that for her, but she unfortunately can't make it because of her vacation but of course we will see her in a future episodes and we will let her enjoy her time just living it up and enjoying life (laughs) okay this this intro is wow okay so in this episode we will be talking a little bit about the sort of stigma around therapy and the things that people say about therapy such as Therapy is only for crazy people, and I guess I'm crazy since I go to therapy, (laughs) and therapy is brainwashing you, (sighs) and lastly, people thinking that simply talking about your problems doesn't help. And of all three, honestly, that can be like the most logical concern because I hate when people say like, oh, therapy is only for crazy people, you must be crazy, and just especially when people say it's brainwashing you like i don't know but anyway i feel like number three might be a valid criticism even though i will absolutely obliterate it until uh my point is (laughs) gotten across so yeah and this is forever blooming okay so you guys know we gotta start with the intro segment the rose thorn bud you know uh you should also do a rose thorn bud in your own time but and for those of you who don't know uh rose is a highlight success small win or something positive that happened today or within the last week and a thorn is a challenge you experience or something you can use more support with and lastly a bud are some new ideas that have blossomed or something that you're looking forward to knowing more about or experiencing so let's get right into it wow i'm really just high energy i'm absolutely so happy to record the episode right now okay so (laughs) uh my rose of the week has to be of course recording this episode because after all of the real life crap that i have to do with just sitting down and talking to you guys about mental health something that i'm very very passionate about is such a stress reliever like this is a coping mechanism just talking about mental health and i really hope that you guys enjoy this episode as well and i hope you guys are just taking positive vibes that i'm giving off from recording (laughs) these episodes i hope you're taking a lot from it and then a thorn would probably be uh if i'm being honest guys i've had a lot of challenges lately as far as just real life goes and just having to deal with i i mean this is sort of a moment when people say ah just dealing with adult things but i'm not an adult so (laughs) just dealing with unfortunate real life teenage things just like uh at my job they're not really scheduling me a lot of hours which really really sucks because i'm really trying to save up to get a car Um, it's a part-time job so you know my schedule is just all out of whack and they're just putting me wherever they want to put me because you know it's a part-time job i can't be mad about that but they haven't been giving me a lot of hours like they've been giving me three hours to four hours and i'm really just trying to get these eight hour shifts so i can make this money to get a car because uh i am sick of asking people to drive me to work and i just want to drive to work by myself but i am looking forward to getting my car and getting my driver's license and hopefully in around november i'll have enough money saved up but you know let's get out of real life situations Ugh. <laughs> and lastly a bud i am really really uh looking forward to the open mic night that forever blooming is hosting i don't think i've ever mentioned this on the podcast before if i have yikes i have a bad memory but i we are currently planning an open mic night which is basically going to be centered around pieces that artists have made about mental health and just sort of sharing all their voices and sharing all their uh sort of outlooks about mental health hopefully a lot of positive outlooks but there can of course 
be negative sides of mental health as well. So I think it can be very uh, freeing, vulnerable, a good energy overall. So I'm really looking forward to op the open mic night that we are developing currently. Um, and will have in sometime in November as well. So yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. Okay, now with that being said, Please do your own little rose sword bud, check in with yourself mentally, check in with yourself physically, just sort of reminisce and don't focus a lot on the bad stuff. Well, you can work through the bad stuff and try to also think about the good parts because it's not that good to focus primarily on the negativity even if it does help you to cope with the negative stuff and grow as a person. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys get what I mean. So <laughs> we will start right off. We will start this episode with topic one. How people believe that therapy is only for crazy people, which is, I hate when people say that. That's such a pet peeve of mine. But um, just to start off, I want to put out a disclaimer first. All of the research that we use in this episode is based on United States statistics, so please keep that in mind. It might be higher or it might be lower, depending on where you are based, but for right now we are talking about United States statistics. So let's get right into it, because I really just want to dismantle all of these sort of beliefs that people have about therapy, because I'm very, very pro-therapy. I know that's not for everybody, but I love my therapist and I love going to therapy so I just want to sort of dismantle some stigmas around therapy and dismantle some uh, negative beliefs around therapy so first off of course therapy is only for crazy people but I want to say that I think therapy is a sort of uh, resource that is available for everyone and I think it's a lot of uh, misconceptions around therapy as regarding to like mental health conditions because you don't really have to be diagnosed with depression you don't have to be diagnosed with anxiety you don't have to be diagnosed with any other mental health condition just to go to therapy i think everybody struggles equally with sort of bad experiences that can make you feel like crap I understand that some people go through a lot of trauma in their childhood and their adulthood, trauma in general, and that also doesn't mean just because you have some sort of trauma doesn't mean that you have depression, doesn't mean that you have anxiety, etc. Um, I do want to say I'm only mentioning depression and anxiety because I have those myself, but of course there are a wide variety of mental health conditions and I'm not trying to exclude it, just saying this from my own personal perspective. But yeah, as I was saying, everyone has stressors, everyone has certain, I would say that everyone has certain traumas as far as just like things that um, have stuck with you for a long time and then you are unable to work through. I certainly believe that. And I think that being able to seek a therapist and being able to talk to somebody about those problems, even if you are diagnosed or not, is definitely available for everyone. Well, I shouldn't say everyone. There are a lot of disparities around therapy, but it's not primarily for people who are diagnosed with a sort of mental health condition which is very, very much a common misconception. And that also leads me to say that there is obviously a lot of stigma around mental health conditions to make people say that actually. When you refer to crazy people as somebody who is diagnosed with mental health, it then creates stigma and your perspective can then be lent on to somebody else. Somebody can say, Oh, since my dad said that therapy is for crazy people, people with mental health conditions must be crazy and just abnormal and just should be shunned from society. And that will contribute to the sort of stigma that goes around in society and just generational stigma and all that jazz. But that being said, you have to be careful with the way that you word things. You have to be open-minded to the fact that mental health conditions don't make you crazy mental health struggles don't make you crazy even even if you're not diagnosed with anything you are perfectly normal for just functioning differently if you have a condition that makes you think differently than everyone that can be harmful or can be helpful if your brain is trying to defend you from uh, certain problems but um, that being said you just function, function a little differently. 
that's all. And that's not a bad thing. Anxiety can make you overthink to the point where you can lead yourself into an anxiety attack, which anxiety attacks were, of course, inherently a very uh, scary thing to go through. I have been through many throughout my life and it's very scary and it can be very troubling but at the same time just because you overthink things and just because you have anxiety attacks doesn't mean that you're a crazy person doesn't mean that you are abnormal or a freak it just means that your brain functions a little differently from everybody else and that is okay and you can learn to cope with that you can learn to embrace that and because that's just who you are that's just a part of you and of course anxiety isn't like freaking sunshine and rainbows or any mental health conditions but you really have to embrace that sort of uh, part of you and try to power through life with that condition that you have that's it you're human it doesn't mean that you're an alien from freaking mars you're not crazy you're not out of your mind you just function a little differently so to refer to mental health conditions in general as just something that should be stigmatized has never really been something that uh what's the word i've never really understood it it's just a part of life it's in, in my opinion it's sort of like if you look at a person with a disability they're not crazy they're not freaking uh mental they're not what's the word a freak that's what i'm saying they just function a little differently and that is the same thing with invisible conditions like this depression or anxiety or any other um, mental condition that you might be diagnosed with um and of course there is such so much stigma around uh, people with disabilities but that is a conversation for another time because I can go on a rant but I wouldn't want to speak for the dis disabled community I wouldn't want to spread sort of ignorant statements that I may make but yeah definitely 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 will be an episode about that in the future because it's a big thing but it will also probably include somebody with a disability so i don't speak for the community when i myself want to, don't have a disability but that being said wow i'm getting off track today i'm just really excited <laughs> that being said overall you should definitely definitely educate yourself before judging people you should definitely try to research and find out information on your own before you just make false conclusions like mental health or therapy makes you crazy because honestly my sort of uh, mo motto yeah my motto is educate yourself and before you wreck yourself no actually it's more like education is elevation and educate yourself before you wreck yourself both of them powerful statements do that <laughs> because really the sort of stigma that is created only is created from ignorance and not knowing about mental health conditions not knowing about anything that is stigmatized and for a fact like people who are racist for example probably don't hang around a lot of people of color and probably have grown up with parents who have taught them to have those sort of notions and I think that's just based off of ignorance rather than doing your own research rather than meeting people who are part of different communities than you people that are different than you in general but that being said in order to avoid spreading stigma and avoid spreading harmful notions you should definitely educate yourself research about anything that you don't know it it really gives education gives you power in general so educate yourself it's it's not gonna hurt it's not gonna hurt at all it's really not gonna hurt <laughs> But obviously we know that judging people is very harmful and I think when somebody who is considering therapy hears somebody who they're close to or even just hears a stranger say that therapy is only for crazy people, it might steer them away from the idea completely. It might make them fearful of judgment and fearful of seeking help even if they're in a time of need. And that doesn't contribute positively to society, it doesn't help anybody to spread this sort of notion that therapy is only for crazy people because it can just damage 
other people's mindset about therapy and it can make people have a fear of being judged or having a fear of seeking help and just contribute to stigma as a whole. Somebody who fears judgment might think that they're losing their minds, that their life is out of control, that they're high maintenance, that they can't handle any life challenges or that they magnify issues or that they're a loser or they're a freak. Any sort of those mindsets and that can also damage the person in self-esteem. They might start thinking badly about themselves or shaming themselves for wanting to seek help and that's never okay. And nearly half of 60 million adults and children living with mental health conditions in the United States go without any treatment and that can definitely have our stigma and disparities without in therapy can definitely have a role in this um there's definitely a lot of stigma around mental health that can make somebody again steer away from the idea of therapy but of course i also have to acknowledge the sort of expensiveness etc disparities within therapy that can lead them away but knowing that so many people with mental health conditions that don't seek treatment or choose not to seek treatment because of their fear of judgment or anything like that really really hurts my heart honestly and i just want to say to everybody out there you're not alone in wanting to seek therapy you're not alone in wanting help it's not bad to need help in general as much as your brain might say it is of course i'm not talking to everybody here but I know that there's a lot of people who struggle with asking for help or just think that it makes them weak to ask for help. It, it doesn't. You just need a little leg up. You just need somebody to push you forward and keep you going. And that's okay. We all do that. We all need someone to support you or someone to help you through certain issues because sometimes it can be just too big to handle on your own. You can get wrapped in your own mind and that can be more damaging than helpful. So having someone with an unbiased perspective to just talk to you and try to push you in the right direction can be the best relieving thing. And there's definitely other people who feel the same way that you feel. So you're definitely not alone. That being said, I think we can move on to the next topic. The one that I think is the most wild. <laughs> the most wild, honestly. Because I, I think that... Uh, I can't even formulate the sentence because I'm just bamboozled by the sheer like audacity of the statement. Like, why do people think about this? Why do people make these conclusions? But nonetheless, we are going to talk about it in topic two. We will talk about how people believe that therapists are brainwashing them. It's a government conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy as a whole. <laughs> They're brainwashing you. They are shoving freaking i don't know tubes in your brain to make you think they're shoving chips in your brain and brainwashing you okay no <laughs> let's talk about this because people genuinely believe that um okay so first off i want to say that therapists are definitely not brainwashing you <laughs> you should definitely know that i think instead of brainwashing you and i'm speaking primarily from my own experience here of course there's going to be different experiences with everyone but this is what a good therapist should do and if your therapist is not doing this then you should definitely find a new one but they are supposed to ask you a essential questions and rather than telling you what to do or brainwashing you about certain subjects they are asking you essential questions making you think making you self-respect and learn uh, self-respect well i mean eh. <laughs> they're helping you think more deeply about things and they're helping you self-reflect on your actions on your thoughts on your behaviors why you do certain things and you learn a lot about yourself and how you individually cope with life and i think that's such a powerful thing honestly I can say before therapy that I sort of shamed myself for certain parts that I didn't like about myself and I didn't understand why I really thought or why I had those certain behaviors. I didn't understand certain parts of me and seeking a therapist and stating my sort of thought processes and behaviors and actions 
stating those things and realizing that, oh hey, this is a normal thing that people do. Or just figuring out why I do these things because she asks a lot of questions like that I never thought to ask myself. And you would be surprised when you're like, huh, I guess that's why I really did that thing. That makes sense. And I don't hate that part of me now because that actually makes sense and it's kind of normal. So <laughs> I think especially since, again, she's not telling me what to do or trying to ask questions to plant like some sort of bombshell in my head, it's more about asking open questions to make you think and make you aware of certain things you might do, aware of how you might process, how you navigate life in general. And that can then help you solve future problems, help you cope with things, and help even with self-esteem or self-respect, as I mentioned earlier, even though it was a slip-up of tongue. <laughs> and I don't know, I think it's a powerful thing to know more about how you navigate life and why you do certain things because that can also help you break certain habits they can help you eliminate sort of false beliefs about yourself like i said i had a lot of shame for the parts of myself that i did not like so having these sort of questions being asked to me having this time to think about those questions and self-reflect really gave me the sort of uh revelations that I needed to grow as a person. And you can even form new habits from the bad habits that you might have had. But um, yeah, and I do want to say as a therapist, well, well, I'm not a therapist. Whoa, 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 let's, let's, let's get this clear. I'm not a therapist, but um, therapists are not supposed to force their own beliefs or opinions on you. And if your therapist is doing that, you might need to find a new one because therapists' jobs are to be unbiased. They're supposed to not give their own beliefs. They're supposed to not force their own view on you. They're supposed to only ask you open-ended questions or um, suggest things that might help. So they're never going to be like, oh yes, you should think this way. Yes, you should do this. You should do this. Ultimately, 100% listen to me right now or you will have a terrible life. No, therapists are not like that. And that leads me to my next point they don't tell you what to do or think they simply just advise you and give you guidance give you suggestions to guide you down the right path and really it's up to you to listen to what they say like <laughs> you can go for a session and be like hmm, that was crappy advice let me move on <laughs> or you can seek a new therapist who might say the same thing or might say a different thing who knows so ultimately you are in control of your actions you are in control of your thoughts your behaviors etc and you can decide hey that thing my therapist said was not the best so I'm just gonna dismiss that or you can say oh that actually was really really helpful I can take this and run with it and have a good life so they're only there to guide you towards the right directions and even if they give you like a horrible suggestion that can lead you to knowing more about yourself that can lead you to knowing oh yeah, that coping strategy didn't work for me, so I'm gonna try a new one. It can just, uh, I don't know, it helps, I guess. <laughs> that being said, they don't directly tell you what to do or think. They just think back to what all their textbooks say and if these certain things help people with this certain problem, etc. And you can take what you want and throw away whatever you want whatever information that they might provide. And that being said, there are different kinds of therapy, so you should definitely do a bunch of research about what therapy might suit you, because that could be a very helpful thing in your decision to seek help. But if you're a skeptic, you can maybe even try this therapy. It's called supportive therapy, which means that they will use guidance and encouragement to help patients develop their own resources. It helps build self-esteem, reduce anxiety, strengthen coping mechanism, and improve social and community function. Supportive therapy helps patients deal with their issues related to mental health, which in turn will affect the rest of their lives. So that being said, they will help you develop your own resources instead of giving you resources. So if you think, 
oh, they're just gonna tell me what to do. Then they're gonna force their beliefs on me. Then maybe seek supportive therapy instead when it's fake focused mainly on you establishing your own resources. And again, I do wanna make this last, 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 last point before we move on to top three. If you find a therapist with unruly practices, you should definitely, definitely, definitely abort mission. Abort mission right now. Click the red freaking button and abort mission. You gotta go. <laughs> because there are, I admit, there are therapists like that. I had a therapist in the past who was just an absolutely unprofessional person, tried to be buddy buddied with me, tried to state their own opinions and that was not working out for me so i had to go <laughs> and get a new one i i visited her for one session in my life and i was like nah this ain't for me <laughs> so and of course if you do meet a ther bad therapist don't give up on therapy the idea of therapy as a whole try to find a new therapist that might be even have lower prices or something that being said just have faith and say you're about therapist you shouldn't be doing this job and move on instead of saying oh since this therapist is bad then all therapists are bad are bad because i do hear a lot of stories from my uh friends or just strangers in general talking about how they seek a horrible therapist and that just led them to think that therapy isn't right for them i think you should at least give it another try before you make your conclusion and, and ban therapy from the rest of your life but again that's only a suggestion take what you want away from this episode throw away the rest <laughs> like i said earlier so that being said we can move on to again our next topic so out of the three again this is sort of the most like i don't know base statement like actual like valid criticism that's what i'm looking for valid criticism that i could think of because the other two is like hmm, i don't know <laughs> i don't know about that one but i can understand how people can think that simply talking about your problems doesn't help because a lot of people are very 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 afraid to be vulnerable and a lot of people think that talking about your problems will make you weak a lot of people think that talking about your problems instead of creating certain solutions if they're more solution focused or more of a independent person i can understand why they would think that simply talking about your problems doesn't help so i'm here to say my opinion on that because everybody has their opinions i do respect that opinion but in my opinion <laughs> Therapy can be really relieving and I'm not just saying that because I have a great therapist and I have a great therapy life But not to brag that sounded really 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 gross like it sounded like I was bragging there. I'm sorry but <laughs> It can be really relieving Especially if you're seeking an unbiased perspective because I know that when I go to friends They'll already have like this perspective of me as their like really good friend and they're just trying to do what they want to protect me from a person or from a situation and it's in good faith but at the same time their opinions can be a little distorted because they know who you are they're trying to protect you etc and having an unbiased perspective can basically make you feel like you're being affirmed like your thought processes are normal that you're basically I don't know it's just really affirming to seek an unbiased perspective and it causes you to think about who you are as a person allows you to grow because I, I know I said that earlier but I think having the journey to grow as a person is a beautiful thing absolutely beautiful thing but that's another topic for another time <laughs> but I do want to state that therapy will not work if you're closed-minded or um, if you're just not an open person in general if you're just very uh, independent or bent on seeking or bent on being to yourself like if you're not open to willing or if you're not willing to talk about your problems or you just want to keep all the information to yourself and be in your own space therapy will not help you have to have a open mind and you also have to be open to talking about these things that stress you out or just open to being vulnerable in general because vulnerability is not a bad thing we all are vulnerable 
in certain moments of our life we're all human we all have these complex emotions that can very be hard, very hard to navigate and very hard to deal with even therapists need therapy like <laughs> i know my therapist says she has like three therapists to work out her own emotions so that being said being vulnerable it's a normal thing we are human we have very complex emotions that we can uh have a hard time getting through but yeah that being said let me get back to the original point <laughs> you have to approach therapy as if as like a collaborative effort be open and honest and follow your agreed upon plan for treatment and follow through with any assignments between sessions such as writing a journal or practicing what you've talked about and that being said i want to go to my or earlier point you don't have to follow through um you don't have to take certain advices or advices advice or follow through with the assignments if you feel that doesn't help you but it can also just help to try one time but again it's all up to you as long as you're trying to be collaborative, as long as you're trying to be open and honest, you can make the best out of their uh, therapy. And I do want to make a bit of a disclaimer here. Finding the right therapist is basically like a dating game. Like you're trying to date your therapist to find the best one. <laughs> Researchers have found that a bond between your therapist and you is likely to have a big, big impact on your growth. And that also includes just how you take therapy, how you apply therapy to your own life. Whether you are taking a good or taking the best approach to it, whether you're actually getting the most out of therapy. That's what I was looking for. I was saying random words that weren't making sense, but I got it in the end. <laughs> And let's talk a bit about like what is a good therapist? How do I know that this is a good therapist? Um, where do I find a ther good therapist? So to find a good therapist who's a good fit for you, you should definitely start by consider considering practical matters first and then um, handle the emotional side later um, as far as just like human connection and things like that. Practical matters that I'm the practical matters that I'm referring to is more like their license, what license do they have, if they have a therapy license, because I think some therapists don't have licenses, but I'm not sure. But um, you should also consider your insurance coverage, location, and the sort of specialties that they might um, specialize in. <laughs> um, I know, for example, that I looked when I was looking into my therapist I had to know that they specialize in depression and anxiety because I know that was what I was being diagnosed with but somebody might want to look for somebody who specializes in LGBT children or teens or adults somebody who specializes in trauma uh, response or somebody who specializes in PTSD etc and usually they'll have it on their little profile telling you hey this is what i specialize in so yeah and as far as just like the personal emotional side goes like the human connection side goes you should definitely think about what you want out of therapy what are your goals and any questions you might have about yourself about therapy about your therapist in general you want to get to know your therapist so you definitely should question them question yourself think about your goals and see if you vibe see if you have a good conversation whether you have a fun time or a serious time or whatever you're looking for in a therapist and you can definitely be sure that you and your therapist are well matched and aligned when it comes to just the goals that you have and the treatment plan that you want to see and of course i will end this well i'm not gonna end it i'm gonna just let you guys know that there are a lot of benefits to therapy because again i'm very pro therapy so we're gonna have to talk about the benefits of it um i could definitely say from my own perspective that is the best thing that ever happened to me but let's back this up with some statistics you know that's definitely um more of a 
valuable sort of trustworthy uh, resource that's what I'm looking for than just me saying oh yeah I love therapy so you should love therapy too but um, about 75% of people who have or attend therapy show benefit from it therapy has been shown to improve emotions and behaviors and to be linked with positive changes in the brain and body the benefits also include fewer sick days less disability fewer medical problems and increased work satisfaction and if we're looking at all of those sort of benefits and that statistics about 75 percent of people enjoy therapy the ones that are in therapy at least can i mean who wouldn't want that who wouldn't want that that's that's heaven right there that's amazing <laughs> but again i do want to say therapy isn't uh all sunshine and rainbows there are definitely definitely negative parts that i could rant about for days because i'm also passionate about it um but we will uh get more about that in the future get to talk more about that in the future episodes because we are getting to the one hour mic mark slowly but surely and you know we are getting to the one hour mark slowly but surely when i start stuttering a lot so here we go let's let's push through <laughs> okay so let's address the negative sides and the disparities of therapy unfortunately so there are just a lot of disparities when it comes to individual sort of circumstances that you might be going through if you're rich therapy won't be a problem <laughs> well i can't say that because i'm not, i don't know i'm not rich and maybe it might be some problems that rich people deal with when it comes to therapy but um there's a lot of issues when it comes to just the expense as a whole because therapy in america at least is very 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 expensive and it's such an unfortunate thing that we have to go through as far as just breaking the bank just to get mental health treatment mental health treatment shouldn't even be that expensive because everyone has mental health everybody struggles everybody has complex emotions so why is it so expensive if this is a normal natural thing and of course just finding the right person and the process being extensive and long form if you choose to go for a long form etc but of course we can put out some statistics out here because i don't want to just say say this like i'm just giving you random information let's quote a source <laughs> so out-of-pocket costs exceeding two hundred dollars were more frequent for people visiting a mental health prescriber compared with visits to med medical specialists or a primary care provider more than half of the respondents of the survey who looked for a new mental health provider in the last year contacted psychiatrists who were not accepting new patients or who did not accept their insurance a third of respondents reported difficulty finding a mental health prescriber who would accept their insurance either in or out of network this far exceeded the number who had difficulty finding a medical specialist who would accept their insurance or a primary care provider so that being said we do see a lot of problems with the cost here we see a lot of problems with people who do don't accept their type of insurance that they have or people who aren't accepting new clients or just difficulty finding a mental health prescriber as a whole either in or out of the network so again there are a lot of disparities around therapy that should not be ignored this should definitely find or people or the government maybe I don't know whoever should definitely find out some ways we can sort of ease the cost of therapy ease the process try to make it more accessible to everybody especially those in low-income communities especially those just suffering from all the problems that were listed and I'm sure there are numerous more problems on the list that therapy provides but of course we will talk about that in the future because it's a much needed topic that needs its own episode to just rant about all the things wrong about therapy in general well at least within the united states because of course i can't speak for other countries so 
that being said we will close out this episode unfortunately again i love recording these it's always a sad part of my day when i have to end recordings but we will close out this episode by saying we do have a website it is bloompod.wixsite.com slash podcast you can find us on instagram twitter and facebook all at forever bloom pod plus tiktok at forever blooming podcast the research and transcript for this episode is on forever blooming's website in the extra section our podcast guest form is in our episode sections if you want to be on forever blooming as well as our audience spotlight form where you can ask for advice to be featured in one of our episodes we do have an email that is called management at foreverbloompod.org let us know your thoughts, questions, and how we can improve the podcast because we always love hearing from you. Be sure to check out our link tree in the description. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends if you enjoyed this episode. And lastly, have a great day, afternoon, or night whenever you're listening to this. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>